Okay, so this is a 2005 Kawasaki ZXNR. It's got sequential transmission just like most Japanese sport bikes do. And uh, the transmission has, uh, it's a, it's a six-speed transmission. So when the shifter is selected right in the middle, it would be neutral. To, se to select the first gear, you just go one down and it's in first gear to select second you go one up second gear to select third gear you go another one up so two up how exactly does it work well let's take the engine apart and find out all right so I got I got this uh, 2006 Kawasaki ZX-10R. Uh, gonna take it apart and see exactly how the transmission works. Uh, from the exterior, you can see a little bit. Um, I pulled the uh, clutch basket apart already. Um, this is the input shaft. And uh, this is an oil pump gear. And this is a shift drum. So, spin it around to see the output shaft this is the output shaft this is where the uh, front sprocket goes on and then you put the chain it transfers a uh, uh, torque to the rear wheel so let me take the uh, the front half apart so we can look inside all right so I removed the uh, the upper part of the uh, engine case uh, that way we can see exactly what's going on inside the uh, engine particularly uh, transmission so <clears throat> the way it works is that you have a, a ship rod that's connected to the knuckle and the knuckle is connected to the uh, shifter so you apply pressure you push on it or you pull on it well it would go probably something like this and the shaft goes all the way through the engine and this is the sh uh, shift shaft. It's got these. It's got. <clears throat> it's got the slot, and it's got those teeth that grab onto the drum. And the drum has three rows where the shift forks go, and the shift forks change the gears kind of like this see how this gear moved and the uh, bottom gear moved to the uh, left see it again this whole piece moves left and right these two gears and this gear is moving so let's do it again and again Let's see what it looks like from this point of view. That's pretty cool. It's got a spring, return spring, that pulls this shaft back in it, back in its place. Let's, let's look at it again. That's pretty neat. So let's. Let's pull the output shaft out and see what's going on there. Comes out like so. And here we can see the two forks exposed. And then there's a, another fork right in there. And these forks slide around. And there's the drum. So the two outer, let me put it right here. So this slot is for this fork. And this slot is for this fork. And the middle slot is for the, uh, the fork attached to the input shaft. So it moves around like this. 
and you can see the fork would move to the right. We spin it again, the fork would move to the left, and now this fork would move to the left. If we spin it to another gear, now you can see that this fork would move to the left, and this fork would move to the left. And this fork would return uh, to the center. If we keep going again, you see that this fork right here would move to the right, uh, the bottom fork would move to the right, and this fork would return to the center. So it's a uh, pretty, pretty interesting how it works, really efficient. And on Kawasaki and Suzuki motorcycles, you've got uh, a gear position sensor that goes in here. Let me go ahead and grab one. So this is a gear position sensor. Um, there are usually two pins that go in slots right inside of there. And what they do is they connect the center pin together with the outer pins depending on what gear that you're in. It mounts like this with two bolts and uh, that way the computer knows what gear that the bike is in. So that's another plus for uh, Kawasaki and Suzuki engines. Uh, Honda and Yamaha has a different setup and uh, but this is my favorite setup. So.